Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I'm showing you how to set up, wire, and install the Height Flow FA12 fans. These are affordable fans at which you can buy in triple packs, as I've done here, but I'm going to show you how to set up four or more fans in your system, as I've done here in the Height Y40. I've set up four fans as exhaust fans here so i'll show you the logic for doing that but there's actually an additional one at the bottom of the case as well that you can't see now these fans in a triple pack are fairly easy to install the logic for installing them is fairly straightforward as well you have one single cable per fan that needs to be connected to your motherboard and i'll show you the wiring logic for that in a second it's worth noting that where you see the fan blades, that's where the air is being pulled from. So that's why you could see all the fan blades in the build at the beginning, because they're set to exhaust fans, but more on that in a second. Now for the fan logic, what you do is you take your fans and you plug them into the system fan header or chassis fan header on your motherboard. Refer to your motherboard manual, but you usually find them in the bottom or at the side of the motherboard, sometimes at the top, but mostly they're usually at the bottom, and you should find multiple ports down there. You should find them marked CHA fan or SIS fan, so you have multiple options to plug them in, and you should be able to plug in multiple fans quite easily, depending on the size of your case, obviously, and the type of motherboard. But here you can see it's quite easy to plug in each fan individually into a specific port on the motherboard. Now, obviously, I'm showing you the wiring logic outside of the build just so it's really easy to see. Actually, you'd wait until the fans are installed and your motherboard's installed and then you plug it all in. The bonus here with this kit is it also comes with a splitter cable which allows you to plug three fans into it and then the adapter on that splitter cable can be plugged into a chassis fan header or system fan header. And that means instead of using three different ports on your motherboard, you're just using one. This is obviously beneficial if you have, let's say, two packs of these fans. So you had six fans. You'd only then be using two headers on your motherboard instead of six. But that does mean that you're controlling all of the fan speeds with a single port. So you can't control the fans individually. So this might have some implications. An alternative, if you have a bigger case with lots of fans in it, is something like this Thermal right fan controller. What this does is it allows you to plug the fans directly into the controller, which is then powered, and then you connect the controller to a system fan header, and you can see that this has multiple ports on it for multiple fans, so it makes life a little bit easier. You can obviously put this at the back of your case so it's out of sight, which means that cable management is easier as well, because instead of running, let's say, six to ten fan cables through to the front, you're only running one. You'd then plug that in with the same cable that you use for your SSDs and hard disk drives. That's the flat SATA cable. So that needs to be connected up to your power supply unit. Generally, you'll find these included with your power supply. And hopefully you've got spares of them that you can plug into the SATA port on there. Here I'm using a Corsair shift power supply unit. The cable on that then has multiple connectors on it that you'd usually connect to SSDs and hard disk drives, but can also be used for a fan controller. You can daisy chain these cables so you can connect multiple devices to it. But if you are, let's say, connecting a lot of fans to it, you might want to have one cable on its own that plugs into this. But you plug the power cable into that and it does need that power cable because then it's obviously powering all those fans. So rather than the motherboard providing power for the fans, the controller is instead. So this is why you'd need that if you're plugging in a lot of cables into it, a lot of fans in there. And then you plug your fans directly into this controller instead. Obviously, you could run the fan cables to the rear of the case, plug them in at the rear, neaten things up a bit. And then you run a single cable from the end that's included with the thermal right controller from that to the chassis fan header or system fan header on your motherboard as I showed, plug that in and then you'll be able to control the fan speed of the fans connected to the thermal right controller. Now obviously you'd be controlling all of the fan speeds so when you adjust it it would control everything but still that's how that would work. Now for the placement of the fans, as I said the front is where the air is being pulled from, the rear is where it's pulled out to. So if you can see from this top of this build for example, I'm putting these fans blade down into the case which means that they are pulling hot air from inside the case and exhausting it out of the top. That's a fairly logical install solution and how you would set up exhaust fans in a system. I've got a side mounted radiator in here. If you had a top mounted radiator, you might do the same, but you'd put these on the radiator. You put one at the rear of the case for exhausting hot air 
hot air naturally rises and this assists with that as well and then you just run the cables down now if you're putting intake fans in you'd have to apply the same logic so you put them face down to the bottom of the case which i actually have in this one but you can't see it and that way it's pulling air up into the case and then once you've plugged them all in just check that they're all running as they should be and you should find that then your system boots up as expected as long as you've wired in everything else correctly and if you don't know how to do that i've got a detailed guide on wiring out all the parts from your pc into your system and setting it up as well as a playlist on how to build your own gaming pc and naturally i've done a setup video on the height y40 as well but they're now installed and hopefully i've given you some helpful tips on how to do that the next thing to do is to control the fan speed, which you can do with various different softwares in Windows, including fan control, which is a simple, straightforward interface. But you can also do it from your BIOS. So turn your system on, mash the delete key, and go into your BIOS. Then look for hardware monitor or fan control and check on your system temperatures. But then we want, what we want to do is basically to adjust the fan's speeds. And you can do that by clicking on the relevant fan header that you've used and then setting them to PWM mode. That will then allow you to control the fan speed and create a fan curve. You can set to default. You can usually adjust in individual ways. You might even have a special system which allows the system to run through and use AI to intelligently test the fan speed and work out the best fan speed for them. And you can find motherboard software as well, which will also help with this within Windows. Hope you found this useful. If you did, subscribe for more. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.